I've had this idea for this uh, coffee table floating around my head for a little while, inspired by a friend of mine, Rob, from Stone City Woodworks. I'll share the picture here. And then I also had these two pieces of cherry sitting up, and I knew I needed to, to kind of put those two things together and, and execute it before it drove me crazy. I'm using this cardboard just as a uh, loose template to try to conserve as much material as I can. So by marking the widths here of uh, generally what I think I can get out of these boards and then going across and getting the lengths out of them, I can get a pretty good idea of how much material I'm going to use uh, and in turn also helps me to save material in the long run. A safe way I've found to break down rough lumber is by using the jigsaw. I might also use a circular saw here from time to time, uh, but if there's any bowing or cupping in them, this is really, uh, a, in my opinion, a much safer way to break down material. It's pretty quick and a pretty easy way to get things to rough dimensions, at least rough lengths. Lengths. We'll go with lengths. So now we're going to get to the point of the video where anyone looking to build their own version of this type of table is going to be disappointed due to lack of measurements. Here's what I can say about how I got to the table base as it stood. I knew I wanted the angle to be 8 degrees between the bottom stretchers and top stretchers. I knew that I wanted the overall table height to be between 16 and 17 inches. And I knew that the center angle would be 45 degrees where they all came together. Outside of that, it was a lot of trial and error. Um, and using this blue painter's tape method to essentially mock up the base and find what I felt was going to look right before I ultimately got to this step, which was a final glue up.
It would have been nice to get a good clean cut all the way through, but unfortunately I bottomed out the bit just a bit shy, as you can see here. So I just grabbed the jigsaw real quick, chopped off the excess, and then used a flush trim bit to get everything cleaned up. One of the last steps in the building process before I was ready for finish was adding the splines as a reinforcement for all of these miter joints. How I came to this was essentially I uh, used a blank, made a slot with my biscuit joiner and then slowly planed down a scrap piece of maple that I had in order to give a snug fit. I didn't want the fit to be too tight, but I also wanted it to be a friction fit. When I first posted this project, or at least this process over on my Instagram page, that you can see there at the bottom of the screen, I got a lot of comments either surprised that I used the biscuit joiner, um, asking more questions about it, a lot of interest in it, and ultimately all I can say is that I don't know where I came up with the idea. I can't take the credit for it because I honestly just don't know if I owe it to somebody or uh, nor do I want the weight of uh, this potentially failing somebody else on my shoulders. So all I can say is that uh, I built this table a little while back and it's holding up really well. So outside of that, I don't have much feedback on it other than this seems to be a nice process. I've always historically cut my splines on the table saw, but because of the way that the base was configured, I knew that it was just too risky of a cut to make on the table saw.
And after I've got the leveling feet and tabletop clips attached, that's it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more projects like this. If you're not already, please subscribe to my page. Please hit the notification bell, like the video, and if you really want to support me, share this with somebody. Thanks so much. Take care.